What's up everybody, Kono Pro, how you doing? What we got here is just a basic shelf, exterior patio shelf, and then we're basically gonna replace it because it's damaged. Time to get out with the old and in with the new, that's how we do. So what we got going on basically is these are the supports down here. These are Gorbel supports. We have uh, one at the end, one in the center, one at the very end, and these are just two by four supports in the middle. But basically what I'm doing is I'm checking out all my supports. This is a cat's paw. What we're gonna do with this cat's paw is we're gonna use that to pry out the nail. You nail it down, get it underneath the head of the nail, and then you can pry the nail right up. But you need a cat's paw to do this tool. Then after you get all the nails safely removed, you pull the board off for measurements. Now we're gonna get our measurements. Before we get our measurements, we're gonna go ahead and take care of making sure all these supports are strong and solid and that they all look good and are gonna work great for our new board. Clean it up, there's some existing caulking, latex caulking on there we're gonna scrape off. Make sure it's all clean, that way it's a good connection with our new piece of dug fur we're gonna be putting on there. The existing shelf, the owner said it was a piece of dug fur so we're gonna go ahead and get another piece of dug fur. It's a two by 12 by approximately 13 feet looks like and what I do is I measure it and then I write down the measurement always write down the measurement I know we're smart guys but and girls and everybody else but we got to write down the measurement so after I get the measurement written down double check your measurement of course make sure everything's good I check it with the top this is a good way to double check it after you measure the actual board then you know go ahead and measure from your supports from outside to outside verify that that's your measurement everything looks great awesome now here what we have is the dug fur see I'm inspecting the dug fur there's a piece of crack there's a you know there's a crack on the in the grain which is very common when you get these boards 2 by 12s so this side has the crack is not as big it's just only about a 6 inch crack on this side so we'll cut that off this is the you know standard skill saw, making sure we're setting our blade depth so we're not cutting down too far below the wood. We want to keep it just barely you know below the wood for safety. Make sure your guard is down. Make sure your your cable's out of the way when you're ready for your cut. And rock and roll. Let's get it cut. Like I say, everybody, let's watch out for uh, safety. Always keep in mind wear protection, eye goggles, mask, ear protection whatever you need for whatever job you're doing. Kono Pro keeps it safe, that's how we do. So now I'm double checking my measurement here. I cut off that, that rough end, now I have a clean edge to pull my measurement from. So now that I'm doing that, I have my measurement, I wrote it down, 13 and I believe 3 eighths. So now once we get our measurement, we're gonna double check everything make sure it's good and then rock and roll on our cut I took it I took a speed square a framing square and I scribed my line and now see that support I put underneath the I put it behind my cut so that way when I make my cut my cut piece of wood that is not going to be used drops off okay make that cut we got that everything looks nice now we're going to transfer the board over to where we're going to install it I like to check the grain, make sure you know which side is a better finished side, and that's going to be the, the upside, of course the side we place up on the shelf, that way when they're hanging out having barbecues they can look over at their beautiful dug fur shelf that has some nice grain to it. We're eventually going to paint this one, but still, I like to, I like to be considerate of the finish on things so now we're knocking down you know you knock give it a little knock until we're flush with the edges make sure we come out our reveals good it's about a quarter inch gap from the existing plank making sure everything's flush then now what I'm doing is I'm scribing where my supports are basically where I'm gonna be installing my screws or new nails whatever you prefer to use supports making sure they're all marked off so here's the in support and what I did is I measured center of the in support and I marked the lines and then I'm gonna 
square that back, draw a straight line, and that way I can place on that measurement my screws, you know, the measurement for my screws. So let's say I screw in two inches from the top, screw, you know, measure in two inches from the bottom, and then I'll go from the center of those marks, and then I'll mark my center point. Once I have that, then those are my measurements, center of my line. So that way when you, you know, when you screw everything off and you wood putty it and everything looks good, it, you, everything looks like it's pretty uniform. They're just, we're just not just screwing wherever we want to screw. We're putting them in a placed position where everything is good. It's, it's going to look nice. It's going to have a good finished product if you do that. So now we're doing the same thing basically with all the rest of them. We're going to, like I say, pull the line, make sure it's center. I'm pulling, I believe, two inches from the line. I repeat the process. Basically the same thing I did on the gorbel detail on the end support. Then I take my line. That's my center line of the support that is below this shelf. Yep, here we are. Marking that center line. You see here? So now I have my measurements. I don't need to pull the line or anything. I can just know it's two, five, four, whatever it is. And then I measure it. Two. Looks like six. Nine and a half. Once I have all those marks done, I take a, this is what this is, is this is a countersink with a pilot. It's an attachment that goes onto your drill. I'm using an impact drill. And this is to basically, you countersink it down so that the head of your screw could be sunk down flush below the top of your, um, your shelf. Make sure everything's flush before I set my countersink with pilot. And then I go ahead and uh, put my countersinks in. I like to set one screw before I continue with all of the rest of them. That way I don't get any movement on the plank. So this is a guard, shaft guard right here. We're putting this down. These screws are moisture treated, exterior treated screws. They're, uh, you know, two and a half, three inch screws. That way we can get down into the meat. But like I say, they're exterior rated screws. You can get them at your local hardware. They come in all different colors, you know, brown, gray, red. But just make sure they're uh, exterior treated. So like I say, I repeat the process. Countersink and then install all my screws. Make sure you're your safety's down, your slip guard's down, so your drill doesn't screw, fall off the, the head. Those uh, slip shafts are what they called. That's, that, that's actually an extension that goes on the drill. That slip shaft will go down over the screw and help it so your, your drill tip doesn't fall off the screw, which gets annoying, especially when you're trying to be efficient and do a good job. So here we are. We're just going to continue. So I skipped that other support and just went to my center support, which is the center gorbel. These are my main supports. And then to my outer support. I'm getting all those locked in first. Then I'll go through and secure the secondary supports, which are just, you know, just to help support the structure and the mid-span between the main supports. Those two by fours down below the plank. And they actually have like, I think a 45 or a 22 degree cut on them. So here we are finishing off the screws. Getting everything done, getting everything dialed in. So after I get all my screws screwed in and everything's secured to the um, structure, to the supports, I take an air chuck here and I have it attached to my air hose, which is attached to a compressor. And I basically blow out all the holes so that it's, everything's clean. There's no sawdust left in the holes. 
Then I take some wood filler. This is some standard wood filler you can get at your local hardware store. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and you, you know put it in the holes. Basically, it's a one inch knife I'm using. And I like to put it, you know, have it a little bit thicker. So, you know, a little bit thick on top. That way you can go back the next day or in a few hours. You know, whatever the, the, the dry time is, the application. If you look at the application um, dry time on the product you're using, it'll tell you when it's a good time to sand it. So, I like to go through with my wood putty. Any little cracks or any little areas, I like to fill in with the wood putty. So that way when I paint it, none of that stuff's seen. So after you're done and it dries, give it a sanding and paint it and you're ready to rock. There you go, guys. Before you're done with that, though, you have to make sure you prime it, then put a final coat of paint on that. Make sure they're all exterior paints. Okay, everybody, hope you guys like the video. Everyone loves it. Please subscribe, leave any comments, and uh, hope to see you on the next one, Kono Pro.